So I used to have a work iPad. I would open it on my commute. I could see the little icon with how many emails I had. And it was so tempting just to do it. Sometimes I would arrive home still tense. I would be cooking dinner but still thinking about work at the same time because I haven't properly stopped, I guess. There's no off. It's just uh, always sort of nagging away in the back of my head. It used to be the case before the advent of modern technologies that you know you'd work nine to five. You know you'd, you'd leave the office at five o'clock. You couldn't check your email in the evening. You, you know you wouldn't be contacted by phone, and so you'd have a very clear separation between work and life. Um, now, of course, that's all completely different because we've got you know email twenty four hours a day. We've got Facebook. We've got Twitter. We've got LinkedIn. And we've got all this digital technology that can be a great thing because it brings a great amount of flexibility in terms of allowing you to work from home and so forth. But it can also be a problem because it means that you're, you're always on and you're always expected to be on. So the concept of work-life balance is, is changed. You know, it's, it's no longer a single switch from work to life in one day. Now it's very rapid switches all the time. You go home, you're with your family, but then you switch because you see something on Twitter that's related to work. So you're switching all the time. And there's a real question whether that's a good thing or not in, in today's society. Digital Brain Switch is a research project about understanding how technology influences people's work-life balance. So coming across from social science and computer science, we want to understand how technology influences people, how people use this technology, at the same time, what kind of technology we can build to help people. So the project was in two parts. The first year, we really spent a lot of time understanding the problem of work-life balance in a digital world, primarily by engaging with people just from normal walks of life. We gave them a video camera to carry with them for a week and make video diaries. From that we got a huge amount of data, you know, we, we got a, a great understanding of what kind of problems people have in practice. And then what we tried to do in the second half of the project was to design a system where people could experiment with different strategies for managing their work-life balance. And this is called My Life Rocket. So one of the unique uh, and innovative characteristics of our approach was that we combined a video study with an interview study. So that allowed not only us to, to understand, to gain a better understanding of, of the participants' lives from within, uh, but also it allowed the participants themselves to reflect on their lives and to perhaps make changes. If you just interview people about their experiences, they tend to give you a kind of rationalised uh, perspective on their lives, an abstract perspective on their lives. But if you get them to video what actually happened to them, then you get much more of an idea of the kind of contradictions in people's lives uh, and the paradoxes and the things that go wrong and the things that they don't expect. So it allows you to capture all those sorts of moments. So from this rich data, we are beginning to come out with some interesting core concepts. Um, which um, you begin to show there's a change in the way people are behaving and, and how their, um, their patterns of daily life are changing because of this use of digital technology. When you look at um, the literature in the past, they very much talk about your, your work domain and your life domain, but then what you're finding is that people are very much blurring those boundaries by using this, by creating this online domain almost, where they'll do all their various different tasks online at the same time so you know, they might go in there and do a degree of work but then while they're there they'll go and do some shopping online and so that is very much sort of creating this new domain in which people exist for a while that's not really been thought of before and that you know, has very much implications about that blurring between their work and life boundaries. So one of the things that we found was that um, we talk about work-life boundaries but actually people often had more difficult boundaries within their work. So moving from one activity to another, for example, activities can be very different from each other. And so people can sometimes find it difficult to switch between activities in their work life. And on the opposite side, they can have some sort of bridges actually between their work and their life. So there might be more commonality between work and life in some aspects. So for example, uh, one of our participants was an HR specialist and she also helped with a pack of brownies. And she found that she could use some of her HR expertise from her work 
to help in running the brownie pack. So, you know, the commonalities between work and life to act as a bridge, and then there can be differences within work and within life that actually act as boundaries. I mean, the main finding that came out of the video diary study was that there is no one-size-fits-all solution to work-life balance. Everybody has a different understanding of work-life balance, everybody has different problems that they're trying to solve. So what we tried to do with My Life Rocket was give people a very personalised experience. We very soon realised that we needed to design an open system that would allow people to experiment with their own particular issue and try to understand and reflect from their own personal point of view. We realised people have a lot of different ideas that they want to test with how little lifestyle changes could improve their work-life balance. So with that in mind, we developed My Life Rocket. So people can use My Life Rocket, define the experiment, define the variables that they want to track, and then track themselves over a short period of time. I can also choose privacy options. Well, because this is a social platform, we can also invite friends. So I can click on the friends that I want to invite, and this is finished. And here, we've just created new experiments that we can track ourselves. There are a lot of apps and sensing devices in the market at the moment and what they're doing is to track your day-to-day -day, uh, information and hopefully uh, give you some in, uh, further insight about your life. So uh, I guess what we're trying to do which is different and I guess this is where the, the value lies is that we are not just interested in just tracking data. We are interested in making people think about their life in the more scientific, uh, systematic way. Collecting data and reflecting on it, that is one thing, but whether does reflection actually lead to the change in behavior, that is a different research question. And that's something we will also like to explore in the future work. From the social sciences perspective, so from the video diaries and the interviews, there's so much rich data there that it will take a long time to actually really understand that data fully and it will be very much an iterative process as, as time goes on as it, you, you get involved with other projects and you can see the links in there. So there's a big emphasis on people taking responsibility for their own work-life balance and trying to get their boundaries right. And we, we saw that coming out very strongly actually in our videos that people felt a deep sense that they should be doing something about it. But it did make us feel that they felt almost pressured to do something about it, as if work-life balance has become another work thing that we have to work at. So, you know, we, that's one of the things we want to challenge through our research, actually, is to say, well, it's not just everybody's individual responsibility, and there are other, other players in this that have to take responsibility too. I think we've just touched the tip of the iceberg, really. I think there's, I think there's a lot more that can be done, but I think this two-year project relatively short period of time, took a very multidisciplinary approach to this, got computer science and social sciences working together, it was a really good way to get the conversation started and to start that research into what can really help people in managing their work-life balance.